Lieber Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap that gives you a wonderful new kind of suds, presents... Our friend, Swan, with my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. Christmas Eve at 8224 West 73rd Street, New York City. And on the third floor in apartment 3B, all is serene and quiet, except for Irma Peterson, who is reading. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Oh, look, Jane, a mouse! <laughs> now, don't get excited, don't get excited. It's lost. It's probably looking for Professor Kapotkin's room. <laughs> Gee, Jane, I've never been so happy on Christmas Eve. And, and that's because I have such wonderful friends. You and Richard and Mrs. O'Reilly and Professor Kapotkin and, of course, Al. Oh, by all means, Al. <laughs> of course, I can't really consider Al a friend because I'm going to marry him. <laughs> well, naturally. And, Jane... You don't know what it means to have a few good friends you can count on, especially on Christmas Eve, when you'd, well, when you'd like to be with your family, but, but mine lives over 1,500 miles from here. You know, Irma, you never say much about your family. Oh, Jane, there isn't much to say. They're just an average family, just like me. <laughs> Perfectly normal people. <laughs> now, for instance, there's, uh, well, there's Bertha Peterson, my younger sister... She's not as old as I am. <laughs> yeah, it figures. And there's my brother, Ernie Peterson. He's engaged uh, to be married, of course. Of course. <laughs> Honey, what, what about your parents? I miss them the most. They were just like a mother and father to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that happens in most families, Emma. But, gee, they're all in Minnesota, and I'm here, but I'm not lonesome because... <laughs> because I'm surrounded by good friends, and, Jane, I, I really appreciate them. That's why I'm giving a Christmas Eve surprise party tonight for you, Richard, Professor Kropotkin, Miss O'Reilly, and Al. Tonight? Mm -hmm. Oh, gee, Irma, honey, I don't know how to tell you, but you see... Uh, tell me what? Well, dear, you, you see... Uh, excuse me a minute, will you, honey? Hello? Oh, yeah, hello, Richard. What? Yes, yes, I know it's formal. No, I, I've never been to the Long Island Country Club. Yeah, I'm terribly excited. It'll be our first Christmas Eve together. Yeah, I'll be ready. Goodbye, dear. Jane, you, you, you mean you're going out tonight with Richard? Well, what about my Christmas Eve party? Well, honey, you, you didn't say anything about it, and Richard invited me to a Christmas party at the Long Island Country Club, and... I'd hate to miss it. It's the affair of the season. But this is Christmas Eve, and I thought we'd be together. Christmas Eve isn't like other holidays, you know. Well, I realize that, honey, well, but well, I... I could understand if it was Independence Day, then we wouldn't have to be together. We could be independent. <laughs> oh, honey. Honestly, honey, I'm terribly sorry, but there's just nothing I can do about it now. You see, Richard asked me weeks ago, and... Well, anyway, my not being here shouldn't spoil your party. You'll still have Professor Kropotkin and Mrs. O'Reilly and, and Al. I understand, Jane. I, I still have the others. Sure. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> <laughs> How are my two little Christmas trees? One full grown and one a little sapling. <laughs> Excuse me, a little yuletide joke. <laughs> By the way, girls, a Merry Christmas to you both. Merry Christmas to you, too. Merry Christmas, Professor. I hope you'll excuse me for coming down. I don't mean to interrupt, but I wasn't feeling so good. And when I don't feel good, I always rush out of my room as fast as I can. Why? I wouldn't be found dead in that place. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, girls, do you realize tonight's Christmas Eve? Oh, yes. And just look at that blanket of snow outside. Isn't it lovely? That is a matter of opinion. If Mrs. O'Reilly doesn't put glass in my windows, not only will I have a blanket of snow, but I'll have a carpet of the same material. <laughs> Irma, you, you better ask the professor about this evening, honey, before it's too late. Oh, yes. Uh, professor, will you come to my Christmas Eve party tonight? Tonight? Oh, Irma, I'm so sorry. You mean you can't come either? It can be helped, Irma. Tonight I'm playing my fiddle at the Gypsy Tea Room. <laughs> I've been practicing all day. Oh, that's terrible. I know, but they pay me for it. <laughs> oh, gee, first Jane disappoints me, and now you. Well, look, honey, the professor can't help it. He must earn a living. And, and after all, you'll still have Mrs. O'Reilly and, and maybe the Martins upstairs. And, of course, there's Al. Come in. Oh, hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Oh, the same to you, Mrs. O'Reilly. Merry Christmas. Say, Mrs. O'Reilly, that's a beautiful wreath you got on your door downstairs. But that sign in the middle of it. Oh, you don't like it? Merry Christmas, lots of cheer. Remember the landlady or you'll freeze next year. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's not a sentimental thought. <laughs> oh, Mrs. O'Reilly, uh, I'm giving a big surprise Christmas Eve party tonight for you and Al. Will you come tonight? Oh, Irma, darling, I'm so sorry. You mean you're busy, too? Yes, the Martins have invited me to go to Jersey with them. And since they owe me four months back rent, I can't afford to let them get on the train by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. First Jane turned me down, and then the professor. And now you. Well, maybe <laughs> next year, Irma. Merry Christmas and goodbye. <laughs> Oh, Jane. Oh, sweetie, now stop crying. I know you're disappointed, but you should have told us about your party earlier. Besides, you won't be left alone. You won't be left alone. You bought some food, didn't you? <laughs> what do you mean? Of course I bought food. Then Al will show up. I'll guarantee it. Speaking of food, I think I'll go up to my room and have my dinner. Oh, are you cooking, Professor? No, I take one look at that dump and I sit down and eat my heart out. <laughs> Merry Christmas, girls. And I'm sorry, Irma. Honey, I'm sorry things turned out this way for you. It's all right, Jane. This is one way of finding out who my real friends are. They're Al, every one of them. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, chicken. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Al. Oh, Al, Merry, Merry Christmas. I'm so glad to see you. Same here, chicken. I like being with you, too. You mind if I warm my hands on the radiator? Of course not, honey. How did they get so cold? Wanted to take the crosstown trolley, but with all that snow on the ground, it took me four hours to find a transfer. <laughs> oh, that's too bad, and your poor face, it's so red. Uh, red face? Well, that ain't from the cold chicken. They caught me with yesterday's transfer. <laughs> oh, my goodness, look at the time, and Richard's going to pick me up in an hour. I'm not even dressed yet. Aren't you going to take your top coat off, Al? Oh, thanks, Jane, but I ain't staying. Just come in to wish Chicken a Merry Christmas. I got to be on my way. Got a big deal brewing. Oh, Al. Oh. <laughs> chicken, it's important. <laughs> you and your deal. Well, business is business, Chicken. I, I got to be running along. But I'll be left all alone on Christmas Eve, and, and Al, I depended on you, my own boyfriend. Well, chicken, if I could only explain... Well, don't bother. None of you must think very much of me if you can leave me alone on Christmas Eve. Fine, friends, I have goodbye. How do you like that? <laughs> Al, of all the low-down, contemptible, good-for-nothing... Hold it, Jane. I won't have you saying those things about the girl I love. <laughs> talking about Irma, I mean you. How could you desert her Christmas Eve of all nights? Gee, me, I have to go out with Richard, but you're her boyfriend. Well, Jane, I, I love Irma. And when a man's in love, he's not responsible. He, he may do strange things. Things he'd never do in his right mind. What are you talking about? I went and got a job. <laughs> You 
got a job? Al, have you been drinking? <laughs> no, it'd shock you, but it, it's just for one night. I want to make a little dough and buy Irma a present. Well, I apologize, Al. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Forget it. Listen. Listen, Al. It's the Christmas carolers. Gee, that's pretty. I, 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 I'd like to stay, but I gotta get to work. T tell Irma I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye, Al. Who is this? It's me, Richard. It's Jane. Jane? Oh, what's wrong? You sound terrible. Richard, I, I can't go with you to the Christmas dance. Why not? Are, are you ill? No, no, Richard. I, I'm all right. It's just that, well, Irma, you, well, you see, well, Irma hasn't any family or relatives in New York, and, and, and this Christmas Eve, all our friends seem to be busy, and, oh, gee, I just couldn't leave her alone, Richard. I wouldn't want you to. Are you sure you mean that, Richard? Of course, honey, I understand. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye, and Merry Christmas, Jane. Merry Christmas, Richard. Al, I thought you left. Came back from my hat. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, Jane, but if you're willing to give up a good time tonight for Irma, I guess it's my duty to be with Chicken, too. Oh, Al, that'd be just wonderful. Well, well what about the present you were going to get for Irma? If you don't work tonight, where'll you get the money for it? Gonna hawk my watch. Oh, but Al, that's the only thing you own. <laughs> you know that no matter how bad times have been, you always said you'd never hawk your watch. Well, a man like me don't need a watch. I sleep all day, so time is not important. <laughs> and at night, it's too late to do anything. Yeah. Come in. Oh, it's you, Professor. Excuse me, Jenny. I've been thinking about poor little Irma and... Well, I decided to give up the job, so tonight I could be with her. Oh, but, Professor, won't that cost you money? You get big tips during Christmas. On Christmas Eve, it's not important to make money. It's important to be with friends. After all, what's money? Well, it's pretty important. I see you've been talking to Mrs. O'Reilly again. <laughs> no, my little Irma has no father in New York, so tonight, <laughs> Professor Kropotkin will be her father. a boy, Pop. <laughs> Listen, Al, the first chance I get, I'm disinheriting you <laughs> Excuse me, everybody, I took the liberty of walking in Oh, Mrs. O'Reilly, I, th I thought you were on your way to New Jersey Well, I changed my mind I got to thinking about poor little Irma being all alone tonight And I just didn't have the heart to go I'm going to stay here with Irma Oh, isn't that wonderful? Professor Kropotkin just said he's going to be her father I'll tell you, if that's the case, I'll be her mother. I got news for you. If you're the mother, I'll be on the train for Reno in the morning. Now, listen, listen, everybody. I've got a wonderful idea. Irma was going to throw a surprise party for us, and now we'll throw one for her. We'll give her the best Christmas any girl ever had. Swell. I'll go out and hock my watch and buy the present. I'll go get my violin. And we can have the party in my apartment. It's bigger. Come along, Janie. We'll start decorating. Oh, it'll be a merry Christmas. Come on, Professor. Take my arm. A fair swap. She's been taking my blood all year. <laughs> oh, honestly, just wait until Irma finds out. She'll be the happiest girl in New York. <laughs> Chicago. Next. Where to, miss? Please, mister, what is the fare to Minneapolis? Uh, $58 round trip. $58? Uh, I only have six. <laughs> Where can I go for $6? $6? Let me see. How about Niagara Falls? Oh, I couldn't go to Niagara Falls. I'm not even married. <laughs> uh, I'll find some other place to go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
And now Susie Swan sings to us. Listen. My advice says Susie, you like this brand new kind of lather, so be choosy. Swan gives you beauty lather, rich as cream. Your skin stays soft as any dream, and fresh as dew. I swan to you, says Susie. I uh, say, Susie Swan, you must have been eavesdropping on some beauty experts to come up with such grand advice for the ladies' complexions. And for you ladies listening, I'd like to say that Susie's advice about swan soap is well worth taking because swan's wonderful new kind of beauty lather gives you the kind of complexion care you've been dreaming of. Yes, swan will leave your skin fresh, soft, and lovely. Now, for one thing, swan's new kind of beauty lather is gentle for even the most delicate skins. Why, when you smooth on that extra rich, extra creamy lather, you can fairly feel how gently it cleanses and how thoroughly your face is left glowingly clean. Then rinse your face, and you'll notice another swan beauty advantage. That's the way your face feels, smooth and fresh, not all tight and over soap. No, because swan's wonderful new kind of lather rinses away so completely. So the next time you wash your face, Take Susie Swan's advice and try white floating Swan Soap's wonderful new kind of beauty lather. Well, we're all down in Mrs. O'Reilly's room. The professor, Al, and myself. We're setting the table, and Mrs. O'Reilly's out trying to find a Christmas tree. Irma? Irma's probably walking around the block. When we're all set to surprise her, we'll send Al out to find her. Right now, Al is beaming proudly. <laughs> Come January the 1st, he will have completed a solid six years of steady unemployment <laughs> <laughs> Professor Kropotkin seems to resent Mrs. O'Reilly's quarters My, my, she lives like a queen and I live like a dog <laughs> Now look, Professor, I know that you and Mrs. O'Reilly have had some differences in the past But now this is Christmas Eve and I want all that to be forgotten you know, she's really a warm-hearted person. Look, look at the trouble she's gone to. She even put mistletoe on the ceiling. She is wasting her time. <laughs> I wouldn't kiss her if I thought she'd cut my rent. <laughs> Easy, she's coming down the hall. Oh, me aching feet. I've walked all over and I can't find a Christmas tree. Did you see Irma anywhere in the neighborhood? No, I didn't, but it's nothing to worry about. We must get the tree before she gets back. Tree? Oh, there's only one man who can help us. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Need a Christmas tree right away. Huh? I can get one at Macy's already trimmed for a dime? <laughs> oh, the dime is for a glass cutter. The tree is in the window. <laughs> nah, Joe, this is Christmas Eve. When I hear jingle bells, I don't want them on a patrol wagon. <laughs> what, Joe? You're playing Santa Claus tonight? Going down a chimney? <laughs> Joe, this is quite a change for you, isn't it? Oh, you're going in with an empty bag and coming out with a full one. <laughs> well, Joe, nothing I can say except good luck and Merry Christmas. Oh, Al, what are we going to do? It's getting so late. Oh, that, that must be Irma. Now, now, let's all surprise her. Stand over there. Let's put out all the lights and give her a big kiss. Uh, uh, come in. Merry Christmas, honey. Here's one for me. Me too, my darling daughter. For goodness sake, will someone please put on the lights? <laughs> Richard! I thought Irma needed a shave. <laughs> oh, gee, Richard, I didn't expect you. I thought you went to the club. Well, I couldn't take it. Same old crowd, same old monotony. So I realized that I'd rather be here with real people on Christmas Eve. Oh, Richard, gee, I'm so happy, and you're more than welcome. Oh, where's Irma? Well, she kind of thought we were all deserting her, so she went out in a huff. That's why we're throwing a surprise party for her, and we're waiting for her to come back. I don't want to find chicken until we can get a Christmas tree, though. Uh, got any ideas, Richard? Well, why don't we go out and buy one? Nice gesture, Richard. We'll wait here for you. <laughs> oh, Richard, you don't have to. Oh, it's my pleasure, Jane. I saw several on the way over. I'll have one in a few minutes. I'll be right back. And I'll get the cake out of the oven. And I'll make some punch. And I'll tell you when it's right. <laughs> Jane, what are you crying about? The party's taking form. I know it. It's so wonderful having everybody pitch in, Richard getting a tree, and all of you giving up things. It's just the most wonderful Christmas I ever had. <laughs> la, 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 la. 
Look, lady, this is your third round trip on this ferry boat. Ain't you got a home? Ain't you got any friends? No. Well, take my advice. Go get some. All right, I'll, I'll try. Thank you and Merry Christmas to you. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. On a sleigh. Oh, what fun it is to ride. On a sleigh. <laughs> on a one horse. Hey, wait, hold it, hold it, fellas. Look, uh, lady, we're Christmas carolers. Now, we don't do this for a living, but we enjoy it. And we rehearse a great deal. Now, we don't mind you joining us, but we like to have the sleigh come after the horse. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, fellas. Let's do it again. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride. When the horse comes after the sleigh. <laughs> look, 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 lady, uh, would you mind running along? Oh, all right. I was just lonely. Merry Christmas. Tom oh, and lady, have you got a dime for a cup of coffee? <laughs> oh, yes, poor man. And Merry Christmas. Uh, maybe you ought to have another dime for a donut. Oh, thank you. Oh, dear, I don't have any change. Uh, would you like me to break that five for you? <laughs> well, if you don't mind... Uh, are you all alone in New York, too? Yeah. How about you? I'm from Minnesota. Minnesota? How well I know that place. You know, you look very familiar. I do? Well, my name is Peterson. Of course. You're Peterson's little daughter. <laughs> uh, my father's name is George. Yeah, let me think. Peterson. Say, that must be George Peterson. How did you know? <laughs> Why, I remember. You used to live in, um, uh... Minneapolis. Hey, let me see. George Peterson, Minneapolis. <laughs> That's the place. I never forget a name. Oh, well, it, it's so nice to meet, to meet old friends. Yeah. Especially when you're lonely. You can keep the five dollars, sir. Oh, thank you. But this is only a loan. I'll return it the next time I see your father. Good old Fred Petersburg in Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's Peterson in Minnesota. Oh, mister, mister. <laughs> Oh, Al, we've walked for miles. Maybe we better go home and call the police to look for Irma. Yeah, maybe you're right, Jane. Pardon me, but you got a dime. Oh, Al, it's you. You got that quarter you owe me? <laughs> Mushface, ain't you got no character? How can you panhandle on Christmas Eve? Great pickings tonight. Just got a fin from a blonde. Told her I knew her old man, Peterville uh, Peterson in Minnesota. Peterson? Al! Mushface, which way'd she go? Across town, you know What's the difference? Oh, I've been feeling like a crumb ever since I clipped it. Seemed like such a nice kid. Yeah. Would you give her back this spin? Yeah, thanks. And Merry Christmas. Hey, bud, you got a dime for a cup of coffee? Come on, Al. Come on, let's go home and call the police. I I'm really getting panicky. All right, Jane, I'm with you. Look, lady, I seen that picture, Mildred Pierce. Now, you get off this bridge. I was just looking at the water, Mr. Watchman. Oh, look, lady, don't look down there. Everything that's beautiful is up here. It's Christmas Eve, you know. Yes, I know. And I'm so lonely. Oh, I get it. You're all alone, huh? <laughs> yes. Uh, you got any friends? <laughs> yes, but... My closest friends are far away. Oh, now don't cry, sister. You're coming home with me. We ain't got much, but we're happy to share it. 
Hey, Bill. Yeah, yes, Sergeant. Did you happen to see a blonde girl? Uh, uh, say, lady, what's your name? Irma Peterson. That's all we want to know. Come on along, sister. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> didn't do what? I don't know, but my boyfriend always says to say you didn't do it. <laughs> Now, look, Janie, we got to be brave. Now it's up to the police. They'll find them, but we got to take our minds off it. Mrs. O'Reilly, would you like to dance? Oh, I'd love to. I'll dance with her. <laughs> I'll play the fiddle. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. How do you like that? I just started playing already. The neighbors got the police here. <laughs> no. no, it's a squad car pulling up. I think it's Irma. My chicken. Oh, Al. Al, it's Irma. The police have found her. She's coming up the steps. Now, quick. Turn out the lights, everybody. Come on, we can still surprise her and have the party. Uh, come in, dearie. Oh, Irma, darling. Surprise, chicken. Here's a big kiss for you. And here's a kiss from your father. <laughs> I just turn on the lights, I'm dying. I just keep this around. <laughs> oh, Irma, darling, Merry Christmas. Where have you been? You're all here. I I thought no one loved me, and I, I felt so alone. Oh, honey, don't you know that people always spend Christmas Eve with their loved ones? You're the one we love the most. Exactly my sentiments. Oh, bless my little Irma. You're like my own daughter. Sure, chicken. I'd never leave you. I want to spend all my Christmas Eves with you. Oh, this is the best Christmas a girl ever had, surrounded by her friends. Oh, it's midnight. Uh, is that right, Al? Wait a minute. Look at my watch. Al, why are you going to the window? Watch happens to be across the street. <laughs> You're right, Chicken. It's 12 o'clock. Merry Christmas, Chicken. Merry Christmas, Al. And Merry Christmas, Professor Kapotkin and Mrs. O'Reilly and Richard and Jane and all our friends. Merry, Merry Christmas. And as for me, my sentiments are the same as those of my friend, Irma. <laughs> Ladies, you can be sure you're getting complexion care that's the last word if you make White Floating Swan your facial soap. You see, Swan Soap gives you a wonderful new kind of lather. A new kind of beauty lather that's extra rich, extra creamy. A new kind of lather that smooths on your skin gently and softly, yet cleanses so thoroughly your skin is left fairly glowing with cleanliness. And Swan's new kind of beauty lather gives you another beauty advantage you'll love. And that's the way Swan rinses away. So completely your skin is left fresh and lovely not all tight and over-soaked. So, ladies, for a complexion care that's the last word, how about trying Swan's wonderful new kind of beauty lather? My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Frank Bingman speaking. Here's to a Merry Christmas cake, the lighter, better-tasting kind you get with Spry. Delicate snow-white layers swirled with fluffy frosting and heaped high with coconut. Rich, chocolatey devil's food. Name your favorite and make it the Spry One Bowl Way. It's sure to be better tasting, made with Spry. Because no other type of shortening has Spry's amazing cake improver secret. For a gala holiday cake, rely on Spry. Amazing Spry with cake improver. That's S-P-R-Y, Spry. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 